Mentoring Writers is delighted to welcome an American lady who was not only a Mentoring Writers mentee in 2020, but who recently went on to become a debut novelist. Today, I am delighted to be in conversation with Dr. Maureen Edwards. Maureen, it's great to have you here in conversation with me today. Welcome. Thank you, Anne. I'm thrilled to be here. Right. We met quite by accident through social media when at the beginning of last year, although you were ready to publish your debut novel, for some reason you appeared a little unsure about the finished article. So out of the blue, I offered to chat with you. Now, before we discuss what happened uh, during our chat, I want our listeners to learn a little more about you. Now, as I said in the introduction, you are an American born and bred, and you live in New Jersey, which is sort of next to New York, a part of New York, I can never work it out, and quite close to one of my favourite bakery shop. I've never been, uh, but I will get there one day, um, and at least this was my favourite when it was on UK TV, and that is Carlo's Bakery in Hoboken. Have I said that right? I have said it perfectly, yes. Right. Plus, you overlook the Hudson River, which I have seen through that gorgeous picture window of your apartment. Um, what's it like living in New York these days? Has it changed much since you were born? Very much so, yes. When I was growing up, not many people knew about Weehawken, which is where I was raised. Uh, it's a nice little town right on the Hudson. So if you're not familiar with the area, I, we're, the Hudson River separates northern New Jersey and New York City, Manhattan. So right now I'm looking at the Freedom Tower and all of Manhattan in, and straight across from me is the Empire State Building. So we're right stone's throw about a mile from New York City in this area. And Weehawken is a nice, lovely little town. Um, Hoboken is na the neighboring town. And about in the 1990s, when I came back from college, Hoboken was the place to live and many, many Americans 20s, 30s, were moving to Hoboken uh, instead of New York City, uh, just because the commute's very easy. Subways, trains, uh, buses, very, very easy to get to. Um, but Weehawken became very famous in the last 20 years. Uh, we have a ferry system that began and linked New Jersey with New York City. And, um, and actually the ferries were in very, very pivotal to uh, New York on 9-11, which is coming up on 20 years in September. And the ferries were able to get many of the people out of Manhattan safely uh, on that terrible day here. Um, and they've expanded greatly since. They, the now ferries run all throughout our area. Um, so that was one, one landmark time that Weehawken was very involved with the area and became popular. Um, also too, when Sully, when the plane landed on the Hudson River, that was in front of Weehawken and in front of my building in Union City. And uh, thankfully everybody was safe. And again, the ferries were able to get everybody off of there from New Jersey really. And, uh, and then recently, uh, Hamilton uh, uh, became a very, very popular play, which I'm sure many of your viewers have heard of or have seen on uh, the Disney Channel. And Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr had their duel in Weehawken, New Jersey. So it's significant historically too. So it's become very popular. Wow. And, um, you know, it's, it's been a great place to grow up. It's very, very congested and bustling now. It's really an offshoot to uh, Manhattan. A lot of people live here. I know you have a lovely view, as I said, because I, you you turned your computer around one day and let me look through the big picture window. So it's it's absolutely fabulous. Thank you. So I have to tell my listeners that you're actually a very clever lady, and I did introduce you as a doctor, but you're not a medical doctor, but you did graduate magna cum laude uh, from Fordham University. Now, for those who don't know this, that is the equivalent of a two one from a UK university and believe you or not me well oh, oh, so believe me or not that is pretty clever mm -hmm. and according to my one of my daughters when I mentioned it she went "Ooh, <laughs> I think she meant you were posh oh. <laughs> I don't know about that <laughs> well I think getting a 2-1 at a UK university is quite good so um tell me was teaching something you always wanted to go into Oh, absolutely. I wanted to be a teacher since I was in high school. 
and you know went to, went to undergrad went to college for uh, elementary education and uh, while I taught uh, any many many ages from age three years of age actually to adults over my career while I taught I went to graduate school for master's degrees uh, in New York City and also in New Jersey and then led to my doctorate in education uh, educational leadership so uh, you know, as I taught more and more children and I wanted to become more and more helpful toward them, I found the need to obtain more degrees. And my, my role changed a lot in education. I went from a classroom teacher to a uh, what we call a child study team member where I assess children for disabilities. And then I moved to administration where I oversaw special education programs and developed programs within the schools for children with disabilities and uh, it was a great experience but I love teaching yes my first love. <laughs> I did do teacher training believe it or not. Now my husband is half Welsh and half Irish and one of the things I discovered about you was that you did Irish literature in uh, in Dublin and uh, so do you have Irish literature uh, heritage do you you know do you enjoy did you enjoy living in Ireland I mean we we visited it not this last year, the year before. Um, we thoroughly enjoyed it. We went back to, because he's from County Carvin, oh. so is, is his family. He isn't, he was born in Wales, but uh, his father was from County Carvin. So yeah, did you enjoy living in Wales? I, I, I love I Ireland. Love, I mean? Yes, I love living in Ireland. I was yeah. there for the summer of 1990 and I studied Irish literature and Irish history. And I was by myself, I didn't know anyone and could not have met lovelier people. Um, and I, it, I was able to use the beautiful library where the Book of Kells is. Um, and I was able to work and read from the original manuscripts of some of the most famous authors, Irish authors, which was the amazing experience. And then I, my grandfather was born in Kilrush County, Clare. And I had been there as a young child, but I returned there uh, in college in, uh, when I was 18. And I was able to see the church where he was baptized. My great grandparents were baptized, you know, married, um, could not have met nicer people. And uh, I actually have dual citizenship. I'm also an Irish citizen. So uh, because of grandpa, because of him being born there. So mm -hmm. I've been there several times. I have many Irish friends and uh, cannot wait to go back. That is for certain. Yeah, I keep telling my husband to get his Irish citizenship. <laughs> now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the way we met was through my offering to chat with you online about your novel. Following our online conversation, I I've often wondered since what you actually thought of my comments, um, especially after I virtually told you to go away and uh, tear it up and start again. Well, not quite literally tear it all up, but certainly tear a bit of it. <laughs> oh, I, I was so relieved to meet you, engage with you and speak to you about my novel. I, I couldn't even call it a novel right at that point. It was a manuscript, uh, my extensive manuscript because I had written uh, for on and off for many, many years. Um, and I didn't know where I was going with it. I thought I was brilliant and done and not so much. Uh, I had two formal edits done and the more I had it formally edited, the more I realized I was kind of lost too much, too, too much. And you responded very similarly to the only other person I was really bouncing ideas off of, which was my mom. And she would have this look on her face of, whoa, I'm kind of lost. And uh, basically you had that kind of look and your first thing you said was, whoa, time out you have enough for six books. This is one book. And that hit the nail on the head. I needed to par it down and really um, get the characters more engaged with what I wanted to, the message I was trying to send. So beyond relief and much like we're doing today, we don't need to be in the same room to accomplish a lot. And you were very kind to meet with me very quickly and anytime, you were there for me and I'm forever thankful because it was a relief to talk about the book with someone who knew what they were talking about and not, not Thank just. You. 
Yeah, because in reality, what followed our chat was me agreeing to act as as a mentor to you and through the process of reassessing your manuscript and then looking at ways that it could be improved or, or wheeling out what shouldn't be in and perhaps adding in what should be in. Uh, we worked on it all through last summer until finally in, in November, beginning of November, you launched your debut no novel titled It Is What It Is. Come on, flash it, flash it. No. Way. Yay. <laughs> so, I have to say, because I'd read it so many times, when you sent me my personalised signed copy, I must say, which has got a place of honour on my bookshelf, I left it and I thought, if I read it now, while everything is still fresh in my mind, it, it'll spoil it. So what I needed to do was put it to one side. And yesterday, it was so glorious here in Cardiff Bay. I thought, right, it's Sunday. I'm going to relax, took the book and went and sat outside and started reading it. Um, now, when you actually did it, when you actually finished it and got it all done, but the whole process leading up to finishing it and everything, how did you actually feel about the whole process of the mentoring process and 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 finally get into that where you've got that book truthfully i was a nervous wreck and, and 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 it was very stressful on myself you calmed me down you believed in me and because i had that belief that you, that you gave to me i was able to put it out uh, i learned so much from you um about even the fonts of the book, the, the, the formatting of the book, uh, and, and things I didn't even know I didn't know, uh, that I was so thankful because if I, I wanted to put out an excellent product, um, and you, I, I think I was able to do that with your help. And, you know, it was such a relief, but it was during the pandemic. It was, it was, we were in lockdown. So it was, um, it's kind of disbelief in a lot of ways that it's even out until I hear from people that have read it and have gotten some, I've gotten some lovely, lovely feedback mm -hmm. about it. And um, it's just such a relief. It's like birthing a child, I, su I assume, you know, it's like a child, it's, it's out there and it's very, it makes you very vulnerable to share you know, your thoughts and your imagination with, with, a, with the public. Well, that's what it is. That's what it, any, any writer will tell you that when you create something, you put in all your emotions. You, I mean, I, I wrote something this morning and it, I said, when you write, what you're doing is you're, you're inviting a reader to come in, into your world. And you're sharing, you're sharing your emotions, you're sharing your feelings, you're sharing your frustrations, your anger, your happiness, your sadness, your ups, your downs, you know, ins and outs, everything. And you're taking all that lot, cramming it all together into this thing called a book. And really, it's like creating, as you said, it's like having a baby. It's your baby. You're creating this this living breathing thing um except it's in paper <laughs> you know um it, it's there and that's what it's all about and that's that's the joy i mean when i see young writers particularly young children and they get a book that they've written and and they see it in print and the, the look on their faces is amazing you know so it's it is it's good now, this was obviously your first novel writing experience. Now, being a teacher and, and certainly being the sort of level of teacher that you are, what differences did you think there were between teaching writing and actually sitting down and doing it for something like this, where, to be honest, we just say all the rules are thrown out the window? <laughs> well, I do anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I, you know, I taught my students, you know, the basics, graphic organizers, um, it, it, pull, pulling resources, you know, it's all different types of writing I taught, journal writing, you know, there's, there's different audiences and different purposes for writing. A novel is a whole other level. And I really, after speaking with you and realizing I had to really restructure my entire novel, and that was the fair thing to tell me because that was absolutely what I needed to do. I really paused for a while and I stopped writing the book and I read, I researched, and I went back to what I did with my students. I read 
certain stories. I looked at different antagonist protagonists. I researched how they were developed and, and how setting and, and, and minor characters and really, really restructured the entire novel, the 400, however many pages I had of it and parted down to a graphic organizer. And I started from scratch. And then I, if there were characters that you were, you were very wise to say, Maureen, you, you want to sprinkle a little bit here and there. You don't need all the information about all these little minor people. And so that gave me pause for like, wow, I have to weigh in who I'm focusing on in the story, Georgie, my main character, and really make the other minor characters less of, of, a, of, a, of a part of the story. And I, I, in retrospect, I was afraid to dive in deeper. I think uh, it's with the characters. I, I was writing very superficially and had to dig deeper with them. Mm -hmm. um, and my 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 antagonist Jose was such a delight to create, and it took me a while. I read a lot of evil people, um, you know, Harry Potter, Voldemort. You know, like I really went evil. And then in reality, you had to say, well, wow, why is someone going to be so cruel to a brand new person that they don't even know and jeopardize their, their career? And it was very, you had to get into their heads. I had to get into these characters' heads and it was all because you gave me more focus and you didn't tell me what to do, you suggested. And in that I appreciated because it still gave me control over what I was doing with my book. And that was huge. Which is how it should be. That's, that's what um, a, an editor, a mentor should always do. They should always make sure that where they want to change something, they should ensure that it's the author's decision. Yeah. And um, I, when I reissued my book, this one here behind me, mm -hmm. and um, I sent it for review, and she came back and she said, there's this paragraph. Personally, I would change it. And this is the reason why I would change it. This is how I would word it. She didn't change it in the manuscript. She just highlighted it and put it on a separate page. And I read through what she did and I agreed with her and I changed it. If I hadn't have agreed with her, I wouldn't have changed it. I would have left it. So that's what you do. That's, that's how it should be done. So now I have to say that as both as a reviewer editor and then as a reader, I certainly found the story interesting and compelling, especially as it showed me a side of a school, albeit American, that I hadn't come across before. Um, the story is such an, this eclectic mix of characters and are they based on people you know or some that you may have worked with in the past? I mean, do you believe they're true to life? Is it because you did the research or because you actually no people similar to them? It's funny, many readers have gotten back to me and compared it to a memoir or, uh, or people that are in the educational fields have let me know that this is exactly true to life. What's real, what's not real. And the irony is, is that the roles are real. The school nurse, the principal, uh, special educator, the, the roles are real, um, but there certainly was no you know, antagonists like Jose in my experience, but you know, you get traits from different people that do, you know, kind of maybe, maybe um, contribute to that. Um, but I really and truly the characters, uh, a little bit, maybe a little bit for Georgie with me, you know, I was a language arts teacher and um, Georgie's very personal to me. I named the main character after my parents. My father's name was George and, uh, so, and my mother's maiden name was Nelson. So I wanted to pay tribute to them. I dedicated the book to them. Um, but other than that, it, a lot of it had to do with really what their, the roles led me to create in the characters. Mm -hmm. And when you look at certain roles in schools, it was really fun to do because there, you could go either way in many different directions. And I purposefully chose the directions I did when I did it mm. to m create drama, create some conflict. And initially, I don't know if you remember, but you said I was being too nice. I wrote, everybody was nice. Everybody was getting along. And, and you said conflict, there has to be some drama here. And I went, <gasps> but I can't, I don't, 
that's not the lens that I have. I don't like drama. I don't like conflict, but writing it was fun. It sure was fun that I have to say. Yeah, that, that's that's the problem. You see, when you're too nice, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have the effect that you want. Yes. So that's when you have to step outside yourself and become the writer. Correct. The writer and yourself have to be independent. You have to go into a new world. Right. I did a I did a podcast about who do you live with? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, and in one of, in part of it, I said I told my husband that if I ever call out another man's name, don't worry. It's either because I'm reading somebody's manuscript or I'm um, I'm actually writing a, another novel, and this is the name of a character, and I'm having an argument with him or I'm I'm having an affair with him, but I'm not <laughs> having one in real life <laughs> because that's what you do. It's what what you have in here. Mm -hmm. So. I want to ask you, throughout the all of the mentoring programme, was there any one particular thing I said or did that you would take with you towards the next book you write? So any advice you think you could offer our listeners or, or, who are wary of taking a mentor on board, maybe? Well, I come from a philosophy of being a team player and 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 I cannot do much without, I cannot do enough on my own. So you as my quarterback or my, my captain as a mentor was pivotal to me. I had many people work with me with this novel throughout the process. I had beta readers uh, such as, um, who, who again could give me authenticity with the roles. I have a dear friend who was a principal superintendent. I had a dear friend with neuroendocrine cancer. I had a dear friend who was a school nurse uh, or has a medical background, I should say. And all of their input was vital but you can take that and get lost. So you, I would go back to you and you were really able to say that's too much, not enough, a little bit more. Just give me some boundaries with, um, with what I was doing and, and how I was structuring the novel. And you brought things out of me I never thought I would do. And you put it in a direction, again, with that conflict, I can't be too nice. I had to create conflict. You were really good with me saying, this is too, you know, go, get that, get evil, get evil. But, and, and you were very emphatic about that. And I needed that because I don't like, I don't like drama. And now that I've written the book and now I watch films and I watch TV and that's what makes it interesting is the drama and the conflict. Um, but without you as a, as a, as a, focal point like one one point person who knows writing who knows the business of writing and how to publish a book that to me was critical because I never could have put out a, a quality book to the level that I did without you so yeah I, I you definitely I and I I'm going to turn to you again if there's something down the road too definitely definitely thank you thank you that's lovely so one last question read the book is there going to be a sequel uh, to is what it is. Will Georgie go on to better things in her life? Um, is that giving the game away? I mean, <laughs> when when I read the penultimate script, is that right? The penultimate, and then read the last script. Now, have, have I got that right? Oh, Cole, my head sometimes gets lost. So I read the final script, which was different. The ending was slightly different to the one I thought was the ending. Mm -hmm. And when I read it and I thought, she's changed this. <laughs> and it was a bit of a shock, a nice shock, but it was a bit of a shock. And I thought, she's changed the ending. She's changed the character here <laughs> unexpectedly, which worked out exceedingly well as it, as it happened. So, But is there going to be a sequel or what do you think? I, I I have some some ideas about offshoots of the book. I, I think Julia is a character I'd love to explore as an administrator. Mm. I think there's a lot of story left to Julia that I, I gave a little, I sprinkled a little information about her in this book and then I can really uh, take her to another level. Liliana, Yes. I get a lot of feedback about Liliana, um, the special education teacher. A lot of people love her. Yes, love her. She, she was very interesting, was Liliana. Yes, so Liliana, you know, I could jump 
time travel a few years and see where Liliana Le is. I could see her uh, being on a child study team. We, in America, we, we have a, 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 a multidisciplinary team of people that work to help with children with disabilities. I could see her diving into that and that is set up to conflict and that is that would work really well also. But I do have my storyboard going already. Um, and Julia, Julia is my main protagonist. So we'll see, we'll see. And we'll see Georgie again. If, if that happens, Georgie will be involved somehow. That's yeah. good. Yeah, it would be nice to, um, if you can bring her in at some point within it, because then it, it links the books, I think. Mm -hmm. And that would that would make it a, a, a nice continuation, mm -hmm. even though she won't be the main character, right. having her appear um, would be would be a nice way of doing it, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? I think yes. it keeps the links going. Lovely. Correct. Correct. So, over the last year, uh, apart from working on the novel and um, thinking, what did I get into when I started talking to this weird woman from Yorkshire? <laughs> <laughs> I also got you entering a couple of competitions, one of which was the Mentoring Writers Summer 2020 short story one. And you were fortunate enough to be chosen by our independent judges to be included in our freshly launched book, The Mystical Treehouse and Other Fun Stories, which is aimed at children at six plus and upwards. Although my husband says, now then I will tell you this. My husband read the book and he said, these stories are frightening. And I said, get away with you. He says, but it's not for kids. I said, it is for kids and kids love to be frightened, mm -hmm. but it's not scary. It's just a little bit. So I don't know what my husband would read him, but there you go. So <laughs> how did you find the experience of going in for a competition after what you've been doing with the novel and then actually being one of the winners? Well, first of all, I have to say congratulations to all of the, the entrants and, and everyone included in the book. I mean, it's outstanding. I've sent several copies to family and friends. And I've gotten wonderful, wonderful feedback about all the stories. So kudos to everyone that entered. I had no idea that I, I would be chosen in the book. I'm thrilled. I loved the break of working on the novel. At the time, it was just in lockdown here in this area. Uh, it was about a year ago that I wrote it. Um, and March, April uh, in this area was an absolute awful time. Um, with the pandemic. So it gave my mind something to focus on fresh. So that's probably why there it's a little dark because <laughs> my stories are not that happy uh, because it was a tough time here, but, um, but it was inspiring to, to again, break out a, a simple graphic organizer and write a short, write several short stories over a few days. And it was a great, great break. And I shared it with several friends. They brought me feedback. Um, and then I shared it with a writing group that I joined since, since everything is virtual now, mm -hmm. it's really, you really can take advantage of a lot of really great groups of, of writers. I shared it with a group and, and they gave me great feedback toward the, the, the story that became the first runner up, A Monster Under the Bed. And uh, I loved it. I cannot wait to do it again. I'm looking forward to the next competition for this summer. I already have several ideas in mind mm -hmm. and um, it's just such an honor. And I love short stories uh, for the reason that the, the stress of a huge undertaking of a novel is massive, yet it's a different type of challenge because you have a limit of time and you have a limit of, um, of words and you have to be tight with it. And I like that. Yes. So it was a great, I loved it. Great experience. Yeah, it's more controlled. But yes. And I have to yeah. thank you for saying that because I was up to my eyeballs with spaces and periods and commas <laughs> in my novel. And I was really ready to just hang it up again for the umpteen time, but you encouraged me to do something totally different and I never thought to do it. And it, it was a blessing. I know all the judges enjoyed reading all the entrants. They had, they had great fun. Good. Now, before I finish the interview, I want to ask you a couple of questions and these are more personal and go right back to when you were a little girl. I, I once said, I once sent this to somebody and I said, can you remember that far back? It was a gentleman <laughs> and he laughed at me and he said, I think so. <laughs> so there you go. What is it you want it to be? Now, I know you said you want it to be a teacher, but when you first, when you were little and started thinking about it, when what did you want to be when you grew up? 
I really always wanted to write. It was always something that I've done. Um, my, we traveled a lot growing up and my parents constantly were encouraging me to keep a diary, which I did. I probably kept the diary at the start at five years of age and I kept it throughout college, actually through college. When I you know, studied abroad and when I traveled, I've always kept diaries because I wanna remember where I go and what I do. Um, so I always, always loved to write. And I really thought eventually I would maybe be a travel writer, you know, travel the world, eat the amazing food. I, you know, I've been to Europe several times and we used to travel to, you know, Mexico many times. So um, I always thought I would integrate writing and, and traveling. So this is the best of both worlds. I can, I can travel in my mind and, and really uh, tap into some experiences and make it fun, make it very, very fun. That's the word. That's yes. the word. Yes. <laughs> now, so I was I was sort of uh, looking up your a bit of your history, and one of the things I know about you is that you're a great sports fan. Um, now, let's get this right: <laughs> Rangers for ice hockey, the Giants for the NFL, and the Yankees for baseball. God, that's a that's quite a mix. So, plus you love listening to music. So, tell me, when you were young, were you sporty? And what sort of music do you actually like listening to? Oh my goodness, I could talk about this forever. <laughs> I am a huge, huge New York sports fan. I am a huge, uh, you know, Giants, New York Giants. We have been very blessed with the Yankees, Giants, and Rangers over the years. They've all won championships. Albie was in the '90s, um, but I was blessed to go to a lot of those games when, you know, when I when they were winning. And uh, I have great memories with my family at, at all of those championship games, which was awesome. Um, I played tennis. I grew up playing tennis and I played tennis in college. I loved it, still love it. And we're lucky we have the US Open here in New York and hoping, hoping that's gonna be open to visitors this year. And um, actually when I went to England, I went to Wimbledon one day many years ago. So uh, I love tennis and golf. I, I started playing golf when tennis, I couldn't move to the ball as quickly. So I picked up golf as well. So, uh, you know, very athletic, love to, love to exercise and, and, and run. And then, you know, hands in hand with music. I love, I love, um, I actually listen to music a lot when I'm writing or if I'm thinking about writing. Uh, I'm a huge, I love women, you know, uh, women artists, Beyonce, Jennifer Lopez. I love Taylor Swift. I often listen to Taylor Swift. I think she's a genius in her writing and, um, you know, I just have a lot of fun with music. I love concerts. I've, the last, unfortunately, we haven't had many concerts lately, but I was able to see the Stones, the Rolling Stones last year. And uh, boy, they, 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 they still got it. And uh, of course you too, I can listen to anyone. So I, I have my mother here with me. We listen to Tony Bennett uh, all the time who we love. And um, actually we just saw the documentary on Tina Turner which was amazing. So I've been listening to a lot of Tina Turner and uh, I listen to all of it. I have, it, it really, it gets me excited and it, it motivates me to, to really write as well. Oh, that's good. Right, so well, uh, when you come over here, that'll be it. You'll be off, you'll be off down to the golf course with Derek because I don't. <laughs> oh, I would love that. I have my clubs. I, I love it. Love it. It's a great day. I always I look at golf and I always say it's like like life. It's just forward progress. If you I will know. I will I will tell you it's khaki handed. You know what khaki handed is? I do not. Khaki handed is when you're left handed, not oh. right handed. Oh, so it's khaki handed. It means okay. he, he he leads with his left hand when he yeah. plays golf. He's right handed. Other than that, oh. but for playing golf, he's left handed. Wow. Well, I'm ambidextrous too. I mean, yeah. we call it, I think ambidextrous. So I, well, I, I no, no, we call it khaki handed. For, okay. He only uses his left hand for that one thing. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's strange. Sounds my, like a great my, my brother, my brother was ambidextrous, but that was a result when he was little, he had a very bad accident. So he had to learn to use his left hand. And then, so that meant he could use both hands, but no, it's that's, that's, terminology. <laughs> <laughs> exactly how I became ambidextrous as well. I, I had to teach myself how to do everything with my left hand. Yep. Yes. Um, and finally, can I ask, what does the future hold for Dr. Maureen Edwards, newly launched author? Oh, I just want to continue to enjoy writing in different ways and just continue to learn. 
and I love meeting different authors as well and reading different authors books and talking with them about how they write. It's exciting. And um, I, I, I love that we're, we're members of the um, Alliance for Independent Authors where there's new newbies out there and, and veteran authors and they're so accessible and kind. Mm. And I've met many, many writers and I buy their books, I read them and I write reviews. And, and honestly, it, it means the world to me to know them, read their books, review them and have that kind of relationship. It's been really, it's, this has been a, a, a dream come true to be a writer and now an author. It's really very special. Yeah, that's brilliant. And of course, what's the magic word? Fun. <laughs> right, uh, right above my desk, fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maureen. I have to say how much I've enjoyed talking with you. And I hope our listeners, viewers have discovered something interesting about you and learnt about your writing. And of course, your novel, Flash It Again. Oh, thank you. It is what it is. And it is worth reading, believe you me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I want to thank you all for listening today. Details of Maureen's book can be found on the Anne Brady Books website, and it's also available from Amazon and all good bookshops. And in the meantime, if you need help with any aspect of your writing journey, then check out our website, mentoringwriters.co.uk, and we will endeavour to assist you. Once again, I thank Dr Maureen Edwards for being in conversation with me and Brady at Mentoring Writers. Thank you.